Hey everyone, welcome to Break It Yourself. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I made this floating vanity. I wanna start off by saying I am by no means a professional carpenter or woodworker. I am a weekend warrior that does DIY projects and I do things the way that makes sense to me and that I've learned from other people on YouTube. So if you're a professional, you're probably gonna cringe at this video. But in my opinion, and maybe you'll agree, I think I made a pretty good product. Now the reason that I wanted to go with a floating vanity is because from what I've read and looking at pictures online, a floating vanity helps a small bathroom look a little bit bigger. This bathroom, I mean, it's not a tiny bathroom, but it is pretty small. It's smaller than our master, and it actually wasn't even big enough to have a tub. We actually had to fur out a wall in order to catch just a standard tub size. So we were a little worried about space in here. We did sacrifice space in the vanity itself, by doing the floating because you're not going all the way to the floor. So you lose a little bit of cabinet space and drawer space, but I think it came out awesome. And I think the bathroom looks a decent size with this in here. Now, the first thing that I started looking into is how the heck am I gonna mount a floating vanity? I knew that we wanted a stone top and then I'd be using three quarter inch plywood. So we were going to be probably at least 200 pounds on the top itself, two to 300 pounds. And then the vanity itself, let's say another 100. So on the generous side, let's say 400 pounds. Plus you have to consider, what if a kid hops up and sits on this thing or anything like that? So I'm thinking, you know, five, 600 pounds. So I started looking all over the internet for brackets of how to mount a floating vanity. And I basically just picked the one that had the highest weight capacity. So the one that I chose had 300 pound weight capacity per bracket, and I'm using three brackets. All of this stuff is gonna be linked in the description below. I'm not being paid by anyone to mention anything in this product. It's not a sponsored video or anything like that, but I'll put the brackets. I think they came out awesome. They attach to the side of your stud with lag bolts, so you will have to expose your studs and remove sheetrock in order to do this. We were gutting the bathroom anyway, so that was no big deal for us. And so far, they seem to be working very well. Once we had the brackets picked out, generally we knew that we wanted a four foot vanity. So that's kind of the space that we had to work with. So I just kind of told my wife that. She drew something up and we decided to do an offset sink. So our sink is offset to the right side. We only have one drawer bank on the left. Just because with the four foot space, had we centered the sink, the drawer banks on the right and left would have been very small. So this is just what we decided. We wanted to have a little bit larger drawers. I mean, they're still small, but splitting them in half, they would have been tiny. So that's kind of how we decided to go the way that we went. Also for the brackets, I made sure that the brackets were mounted less than four feet apart so they would fit on the inside of the vanity on the far right and the far left. And then the third one supports that left side of the sink. So it ended up working out perfectly with the studs. I will say it was challenging to get the brackets perfectly level. I was doing that by myself. I would definitely recommend getting another set of hands or maybe like cutting a piece of wood to help hold the bracket up while you mount it. It was just cumbersome to try to hold it with a level on it and screw a lag bolt in and get them all at the same height. So the one in the middle was a hair lower. So I did add some shims afterwards underneath the cabinet just to make sure that all three brackets were bearing weight. Okay, now let's actually start the vanity build. And the first thing I did was purchase my lumber. I had three quarter inch plywood. I went with birch plywood just from a big box store and I paid $70 for a four by eight sheet. And then I also got some poplar to do the face frames and the rails and styles. And then I got half inch plywood to do the panels in the doors and drawers. And then lastly, for the drawer boxes, I just made them out of pine. So I got three quarter inch pine. I think I went with like a higher quality pine that didn't have any knots in it. And then for the bottoms of the drawers, I also used that half inch plywood. Okay, what are you actually gonna need for this build? These are the things that I use. 
I needed a table saw, a miter saw. You could probably get away without the miter saw if you have a table saw, but let's be honest, if you have a table saw, you probably have a miter saw. A Craig jig or a way to make pocket holes. I upgraded to the Foreman, which is awesome. You can just use their standalone jigs, which I think are amazing. A dado stack for the table saw, and I used a planer. Now, I don't think that the planer is 100% necessary, but it does help tremendously with the thickness of the boards and making sure that everything is the same. Because I found buying poplar boards and ripping them down for face frames and stuff, that board to board, the thicknesses can vary quite a bit. So I just run them through the planer to make sure everything is exactly the same thickness. So let's take the plywood over to the table saw. I ripped everything down on the table saw, including the three quarter inch and the half inch plywood. We also took our poplar and we ripped it down into two inch pieces because everything that I'm doing is gonna be two inches. So my rails and styles and face frames all gonna be two inches wide, which is why I ripped the poplar down to two inches. Then I cross cut all of my plywood. I use a cheap track saw that I got off of Amazon. I don't necessarily recommend it. I'll link to it in the description, but I think Craig, I'm a huge fan of Craig. They didn't pay me to say that. And I would look at any solution that they have, and it's probably a great one for getting good straight cross cuts, or you can just use your table saw, or you can use a circular saw with some type of fence. So once I had all the plywood ripped down and cross cut, I went ahead and did all my pocket holes in the plywood. So in the plywood to attach to itself, to actually make a rectangular box, and then also adding pocket holes so that I could screw the face frame onto the front. Now normally, let me point out here, that once I assembled this box, the top is solid. Normally I wouldn't do that, but because it's hanging from three brackets, I wanted this as solid as possible. So I built a solid top with the intent of just cutting a hole for the sink later. Normally all the weight is bearing on the ground, so I don't really care about the top because it's not really doing much at all. But in this instance, I went with a solid top. Now I took the poplar and built the rails and styles for the doors and drawers. I'm using a table saw with a dado stack to do this. I used a quarter inch thick dado to cut all my grooves into all that poplar. And then I changed it to about a one inch stack with a sacrificial fence to add all my tongues onto everything as well. So once I used the table saw to do the tongues and grooves, I also added a rabbit, it's called a rabbit, around the half inch plywood so that it could be used as the panels for the doors and drawers. Typically, you would just be able to use quarter inch plywood, but that feels a little flimsy to me on doors. So this is the strategy that I've taken on all the cabinets in my house is that I want half inch plywood for that panel on my doors because it's sturdier, but I don't wanna make a half inch groove in my three quarter inch thick poplar. So I make a quarter inch and then I mill a rabbit around the outside of my half inch plywood so that it'll slot into the quarter inch with no problem. Once I glued all that together, it was then time to paint. So we painted the doors and drawers. We also painted the face frame and we also painted the plywood that makes up the sides. Additionally, I went ahead and did polyurethane on what would be the interior of just the cabinet. I didn't bother with the drawer bank side because no one's ever gonna see inside there. There shouldn't be any wear and tear on that plywood inside of the drawer bank just the plywood that makes up the cabinet because you're going to be adding stuff to the bottom of that cabinet pretty much all the time grabbing stuff in and out of there so i went ahead and did polyurethane on those as well as the bottoms of the drawer so the half inch plywood for the bottom of the drawer went ahead and did that as well as the plywood the three quarter inch plywood for the cabinet so for the paint we primed and put two coats of gray latex on almost everything and then the polyurethane on the visible parts of the interior. Once everything was painted and polyurethane, I went ahead and assembled the vanity and then installed the doors and drawers.
Now, the drawer boxes were a huge pain. And like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm not like a woodworker or a carpenter. So I struggle with drawers for sure. Doors, I've gotten down a little bit easier, but the drawers, getting the slides put in properly, getting the heights and offsets, everything perfect, it just takes a while. I will get there eventually, but even with however many drawers I've done, it's still a challenge even for me. I have historically done dovetails on my drawer boxes, but I just don't think it's worth the time and effort. So for these, I just did pocket holes. For the drawer boxes, I also just made them out of pine. I milled it down on my planer to five eighths of an inch thick. And then I cut a groove into it so that the drawer box would slide in. And in this case, I cut a half inch groove and just slid in the half inch plywood. Also at this point, I was kind of second guessing like how strong is this thing gonna be? And I added a bunch of bracing to the back of the vanity, just with pieces of plywood with a bunch of pocket holes, just to add strength and rigidity to this vanity because I just wasn't sure how things were gonna turn out. I also used Craig's hinge, hidden hinge jig and their drawer pull jig. Both of those have worked very well for me. I'll link them in the description, but that's how I put the hinges onto the doors and that's how I put the pulls onto the doors as well as the drawers. For the drawer slides, I went with Blum's undermount soft close slides. These are my absolute favorite and the soft close on them just feels perfect. I also like the way that you can disengage and take the drawer box out very easily. It has um, these releases underneath the drawer and it's just really convenient and great. And they also have adjustment built in. So for someone like me who struggles with drawers, it helps out tremendously. And once everything was assembled and put together, it was time to dry fit this stuff onto the brackets. So that bracing that I put in the back, I made sure to um, cut holes and slots into it of where the brackets would actually slide in. So then we came for a dry fit. So we took the drawer boxes out, brought it in, and thankfully it fit perfectly. Like I mentioned, this is where I actually noticed that that middle bracket was a little bit low. So I went ahead and shimmed it just so that weight was being distributed evenly between the three brackets. I was a little worried before the vanity was screwed into the studs. It I wasn't sure how it was gonna go, but once we screwed this thing into the studs, it is rock solid. This is before the top was put on. I mean, I could sit on it and it didn't budge at all. It was amazing the difference that it made. So I went ahead and screwed in the vanity um, to all the studs. It's only tied into one, two, we have four studs that we're tied into and I'm using that back bracing that I put in and just putting three inch screws through that into the studs and it's working incredibly well so far. I actually am very impressed with how sturdy it is. So at this point, we didn't have the top on, we didn't have the sink in, we paid somebody to come do that. So they came out and measured once it was all installed and then I cut the hole for the sink and I tried to get it as close as I possibly could just to retain as much plywood on top as I could. And then they came out and they, they installed this thing so quickly, I didn't get any video. They were here for like, 20 minutes. I was working over my computer, figured I'd have a little bit of time to maybe like come over casually look. No, they were in, it was installed. They were, and then when the guy came to talk to me for the second time, he was done. So I don't have any footage of them installing it, but I have the after product. They did an awesome job. It's still absolutely rock solid. Like I can sit on it still and it doesn't move at all. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I think it helps this smaller bathroom feel a lot bigger. It's a unique look having the floating vanity and I think it just looks great, absolutely great. So credit to my wife for picking the colors and designing this thing. It came together very nicely. If you're interested in how this vanity does long-term, feel free to head over to my Instagram, which I'll put here, because that's kind of where I end up doing most of my updates or just letting you know how things are actually going or progressing, as well as you can actually see me do these projects real time. And uh, we'll see, we'll see how this does over the life. We got the plumbing done and it's, uh, it's going great so far. Also, I'm not sold on these LED lights by any means. I put them on there because I thought the thumbnail would look good. And uh, I think those are getting vetoed. <laughs> I thought, it was, I thought it was cool for the thumbnail. Clickbait. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. Don't forget to thumbs me up. And we will see you next time.